What's up, everybody? Let me turn this off. This is my impact on pop review for June 5th, July 5th, 2016, not June. Yesterday's 4th of July. Hopefully you had a good 4th of July. Let me turn my Twitter off so I'm not distracted. Anyways, this is my impact on pop review where the main event was... Uh, some people probably hated it. I didn't hate it. It was innovative. I will say that it was groundbreaking. It was something I've never seen before in wrestling. So I enjoyed it because it was something different. At least it was something different I've never seen before. It was the fight between, or the match, I guess it was a match between Matt and Jeff Hardy. So here we go with my impact on pop review for July 5th, 2016. Up first, we, they showed a video of Matt Hardy at his house, I guess, with his wife, Rebby, and his son, Maxwell. I guess it is the kid's birthday. Because they had a birthday cake in front of Maxwell. So happy birthday to the kid, whenever his birthday was. So Maxwell, they showed his birthday. It was like a birthday party. And uh, some Spanish guy was in the video also. He was talking in Spanish, <laughs> telling everybody, I don't know, viewer discretion is advised for the main event and stuff like that, that it's going to be a massacre. And then up first we had come out was Maria Canellis was in the ring. Maria was in the ring with Mike Bennett, the X Division champion. This was pretty good because it was a good promo from Maria and Mike Bennett. Mike Bennett was talking about cashing in the X Division Championship next week. That he was going to cash in at Destination X. Cash in the X Division title for a world title shot. He was expecting to do that. I'm sure he wanted to do it. But instead of cashing in option C, instead Mike Bennett had to defend the X Division Championship because Dixie Carter came out. And then Dixie Carter says, you're defending your title tonight against the entire X Division, Mike Bennett. The Miracle had to defend the X Division title against the entire X Division, or what's left of the X Division wrestlers. There's a, at least five or six of them. So Dixie then says, you're defending... Against the entire X Division and it is Ultimate X for the X Division title. So then the match starts. They come back from commercial. It's Eddie Edwards, DJ Z, Rockstar Spud, Andrew Everett. Uh, I can't remember the other guy's name. Brax, I think his name's Braxton Sutter. He was in it. Trevor Lee. And the Miracle, the champion, the Miracle, Mike Bennett was in it. Um, and uh, Andrew, that Andrew was in it also. So it was good. It was good action, good first match to kick off Impact on Pop. A lot of action from the X Division. Andrew climbs up, climbs up to the uh, scaffold, whatever you want to call it, the thing that holds up the Ultimate X. He climbs up at about 15 feet, does a moot saw, takes out everybody on the outside. That was a awesome fucking spot. Mad respect to him for doing that. I would never try that. It was a good X Division match, a lot of action. The Miracle loses the X Division title. It was down in the Miracle and Eddie Edwards, they were both going after the title. A ladder was involved to climb up and get the title. Whatever. I'm not upset about them using a ladder. Some people were bitching and complaining that why are they using a, a ladder in Ultimate X? Who cares? It doesn't matter to me. Anyways, Eddie Edwards knocks down the Miracle. The Miracle falls. Eddie Edwards gets... He's climbing on the rope of Ultimate X, grabs the title, gets it down. Eddie Edwards is the new X Division champion in TNA, a two-time X Division champion. Congratulations to Eddie Edwards. Really good wrestler. 
a uh, really good guy on Twitter. The guy's really nice to his fans if you're a fan of his, like I am. Up next, we had Eli Drake defend the King of the Mountain Championship. Eli Drake defended against the Cowboy, James Storm. This match was, it wasn't good or bad. It was okay. Anyways, Eli Drake gets himself disqualified, so he retains the title. James Storm wins by disqualification. I like Eli Drake. I think he's entertaining as hell. Up next, we had Marty Bell in knockouts action. Marty Bell took on her former uh, dollhouse partner, Jade. Jade versus Marty Bell. This was a street fight, and it was pretty good. Uh, during Towards the end, Marty Bell had a, some type of nightstick, and then Jade pulled out from behind her nunchucks, and she started doing this with the nunchucks. Some idiot on Twitter tweeted me that isn't Jade having nunchucks racist. No, I don't. I don't see how just picking up a weapon. How would that? How would that make it racist? That's just stupid. I mean, maybe if she pulled out ninja stars and started throwing them at uh, Marty Bell, maybe that would have been racist. But I didn't think it was racist. Anyways, Jade wins by the package pile driver. Good finisher that she does. Package pile driver. One, two, three. Jade wins. Up next, we had uh, and Marty Bell looked pretty damn sexy in her uh, tight jeans. By the way, up next we had uh, Jeff Hardy's. They said they're going to Jeff Hardy's house to get an inside look at Jeff Hardy's house. I think. I'm pretty sure that's where the match took place, the main event. So we go to Jeff Hardy's crib, and TNA presents TNA Cribs with Jeff Hardy. So they go in his house, show his house, and uh, Matt Hardy, Jeff turns around, and Matt Hardy pops up like out of a hologram out of a, I don't know, out of a drone. It looked like it was weird. Matt Hardy's face pops out of... It looked like a drone. Pops out of it like a hologram. Starts talking to Jeff. Like, it was weird. It was odd. It was like, reminded me of a bad sci-fi movie. Like, Star Trek style. Or like a Star Trek from the 60s. A TV show. That's what it reminded me of. It was weird. But whatever. Matt Hardy's character is weird. So I was okay with it. But it was, uh... It was like some sci-fi Star Trek shit. It was a weird, looked like a D movie. Um, next we had the Miracle. Backstage, the Mi yeah, the Miracle and Maria. Not backstage, in the ring. Mar the Miracle and Maria in the ring face off with Dixie Carter. Billy Corgan is also in the ring. And Mike Bennett. The Miracle's demanding that Dixie put him in the Destination X main event or they will walk and quit TNA. Well, uh, Dixie didn't really know what to say. She had nothing to say, really. Billy Corgan, the other, I guess, her partner. The guy that owns 49% of TNA. And Dixie owns 51%, so Dixie's still sadly in control I don't know what I know Billy Corgan is a big wrestling fan. I'm sure he grew up a wrestling fan, but I don't, I don't know if TNA would be any better off if uh, Billy Corgan ran things and Dixie Carter. I I don't know. I would like to think it would be better, but I don't know. Anyways, Billy Corgan owns part of TNA people, if you didn't know that. He he bought 49% of stock. And so he's half owner of TNA. So him and Dixie are now business partners in real life. Not just on TV. So Billy Corgan is getting irritated and he snaps. He screams, screams, shut up! He's, he's pissed. And then he goes, Mike Bennett and Maria, you want to quit? Billy Corgan says, go ahead and quit. You can walk out, go ahead and quit. He didn't care anymore. Anyways, then Billy says, quit, you can walk out, do whatever you want. And then the miracle says, he comes back with, I'm going to ruin 
Destination X. I'm going to ruin it. Whatever that means. I'll have to watch next week is Destination X on Pop TV. I'll have to watch to see what Mike Bennett does. I like the miracle. The guy's a good wrestler. The guy's good at promos. I also like Maria. She's hot as hell. How could you not like uh, seeing Maria on TV? Up um, next, we had a Matt Hardy final, whatever that they were building it as a final thing. Matt Hardy does a promo. And he says that it's upon us pretty soon. And then we up next we had Decay. Decay take on the Bromance and Raquel in a six mixed tag, six person or six intergender, six person tag. So the Decay, before they, they even start the match, the Bromance get on the mic and say, We recorded something that you should see. And Decay is standing on the stage, so they look up at the screen and it is Rosemary being recorded backstage. I guess the bromance have got every part of the impact zone recorded and on their iPad somehow. They got secret hidden cameras in every part of the impact zone. So the bromance catch. This was pretty funny. They catch Rosemary making out with Bram. They're making out for a while. I feel sorry for Rosemary that she had to kiss that scumbag, but whatever. Yes, I still uh, have anger and some heat with Bram, and I probably always will because the guy beat up his ex-girlfriend or hit her once or twice. All I know is the guy was arrested for domestic violence, so that's why I don't like Bram, and I never will. I feel sorry that Rosemary had to kiss the scumbag. But anyways, then Abyss and Crazy Steve were confused. They were upset. They didn't know what to think. When they saw Rosemary kissing Bram, they were upset. So that distracted them in their match. And I knew right there they were going to lose. And they did. The Bromans win and with Raquel. Raquel, former Tough Enough competitor from 2015. Raquel's a pretty hot chick. I don't know how good she is in the ring. I haven't seen that much of her in the ring. But maybe she'll improve a lot. But I, all I know is she looks hot. And that's the most important thing. Not j well, uh, women's wrestling and being a good women's wrestler is the most important thing, but looks are also, in my opinion. Anyways, then we go after the Bromance and Raquel defeat Decay. We go backstage and Eddie, or in the ring, Eddie Edwards is with Jeremy Bro Borash. And Jeremy says, are you going to... Cash in op option C to get a world title shot, Eddie Edwards. What are you going to do? What is your decision? Eddie says, he starts talking. And then Lashley's music hits. The TNA world champion Bobby Lashley comes out. Lashley says, I will, if you go up against me, I will destroy you. He says, I've ended careers. This is Lashley talking. I've ended careers. I've ended Kurt Angle. Where's Kurt Angle? You haven't seen Kurt Angle. And then he brings up, I ended Drew, Ma Drew Galloway. He ended his title reign. But Eddie Edwards says, basically, he goes, I'm not afraid of you. Quit trying to intimidate me. And then Lashley goes like this, pats him on the shoulder. Eddie Edwards pushes his arm off him and goes, don't touch me. Don't ever touch me again. I'm not afraid of you, stuff like that. Eddie Edwards, I believe, drop kicked to Lashley, took him out, took him out of the ring. And then Eddie Edwards says he's cashing in option C, but this is different. Next week at Destination X, it's not just cashing in the X Division title, it's title for title. So X Division title versus the TNA World title winner becomes a double champion, I guess. I don't know how they're going to do that if uh, Lashley wins the X Division title. That will be pretty weird because he's not an X Division wrestler, but whatever. Title for title next week at Destination X. That should be a good match. I'm looking forward to it. So I'm ne I'm next we had the main event. Jeff Hardy versus Matt Hardy in their final battle. Brother versus brother again. Broken Matt. Versus Brother Nero. Final battle, basically. 
Before that, we had EC3 and uh, Drew McIntyre split screen interview. It was pretty good stuff. Next week, EC3 versus Drew Galloway. And it's going to be pretty good. Next week, EC3 at the end of the interview goes, Next week, I am going to kick your ass, Drew. And then the interview ends. On to the final battle, Jeff Hardy versus Matt Hardy, I believe. It was in Jeff Hardy's property on his backyard, wherever. I don't think it was Matt Hardy's property because that giant Jeff Hardy symbol, where he started climbing the ladder above the symbol, that was on the property. So it was probably Jeff's property. And that's just my guess. So this match was... As I said in the beginning of this video, it was pretty, it was very different. I At least TNA is doing something different that I've never seen before. WWE's never done this. Uh, any other company, I've never seen do this. You could say Lucha Underground does a lot of stuff that's different. They make like movies, like sci-fi type movies that aren't believable, stuff like that. Well, I don't know. I know they've made some sci-fi movies and stuff like that. Some weird out there movies that Lucha Underground has put on their show. But I haven't seen it because I don't have time to watch Lucha Underground. And I don't really care if I miss it. I mean, I, I, can't, I don't have time for Lucha Underground. I have to have a freaking life out of watching like four... Four to five different wrestling companies. I don't have time to watch four or five different wrestling companies. I need time for a social life. Okay? So, that's why I don't watch Who's on the Ground. Anyways. So. And uh, I have other interests. Other than wrestling people. So, I gotta do that. Stuff. Plus, I also have work. Anyways. Um, what was I saying? <sighs> yes, Matt Hardy Jeff, the main event. Anyways, as I as I was saying, it was something different. At least it, TNA did something different in this match. Something I've never seen before, and I've been watching wrestling since 1987. It was something different. It was pretty entertaining. And I was, uh... Looking forward to what was going to happen. What the hell they were going to do in this match. And how crazy and out there it was going to get. Up first we had. As I said it was in a backyard. Or I think it was in the backyard. It probably was behind the house. Because if you do a match in front of your house. Je uh, Jeff Hardy or wherever the match was held. They would have probably had neighbors complaining. But who knows if Jeff even lives near any neighbors. The guy looks like he has a pretty big property and doesn't. his neighbors probably aren't close to him. Anyways, this match starts off with a, a very dark... The referee comes in a car. And he's looking out of his car window like, what is this? What the hell is this? I, what is this? Where am I? <laughs> and then he gets out of his car... And Matt Hardy stops him and goes, are you an official, a licensed referee, or asked him something like that. He says yes. So the match starts and with playing weird music during the first, I would like to say, four minutes, five minutes of the match. They're playing this weird horror movie music. It reminded me of a horror movie. It was music like... That'd be in a thriller or a horror movie. Music like, what's going to happen next? Music like that. It was odd music, but it fit the match. They eventually cut the music off and stopped it. Anyways, Matt Hardy starts using a Singapore cane in the beginning. Beating Jeff with it for, for a little bit. And then uh, Matt gets out a giant ladder. It wasn't a regular ladder that folds up. It was a giant ladder like... Where you would climb up to a like 15 foot, 20 foot roof. It was like a roofing ladder. One of those giant single ladders. So Matt uses it against Jeff a couple times. And then before, after he used the ladder, then Matt Hardy actually bit his brother. This match is crazy. If you didn't watch Pop TV tonight, well, find the match on YouTube and watch it. 
because it was pretty damn insane. The stuff that they did in it was pretty damn crazy. Matt bites Jeff twice. Bit him on the arm or the back. It was weird. And then he starts lighting fireworks. I'm not joking. This was, as I said, this was something I've never seen before in pro wrestling. At least it was something different. At least TNA is trying and doing something different that WWE or nobody else is doing. And you could say it was shit, whatever. That's your opinion. I, at least, I think it was pretty innovative and at least it was something different and entertaining. Then the normal main event match inside an arena in a ring. In front of a crowd. This was not in front of a crowd. So then Matt starts shooting off fireworks. I don't know what kind of fireworks they were shooting really fast at Jeff. Some could have been bio rockets. But it looked like a Roman candle kept shooting, shooting out at Jeff. Jeff had a trash can lid. He was going like this, blocking the fireworks so they wouldn't hit him in the damn face. Because that's dangerous as hell. If uh, you shoot a Roman candle at someone's face, it could hit them in their eye, and they actually could get blind for life. I actually had a friend once that shot a bottle rocket across the street at another friend of mine, and it hit him right here. It hit him right in his chest, and he actually had a burn mark and a scar in his chest for life. So that don't do that. If you... Had, if you set off fireworks this 4th of July or the rest of this week, if you still set them off like idiots do in my neighborhood, they keep setting them off until a week after the 4th of July. If you do set off fireworks around friends, don't shoot them at each other. That's immature and that's stupid. And you could really injure one of your friends badly. And then you would uh, feel like crap. So don't shoot fireworks at each other or family members or friends. So, but Matt didn't care. Matt was shooting Roman candles and a lot of fireworks at Jeff. But luckily Jeff was blocking them with the trash can lid. And then we have Matt Hardy hiding. Uh, Jeff Hardy starts then shooting fireworks at Matt. Same thing, bottle rockets and a lot of fireworks are shooting rapid, rapidly, really fast at Matt Hardy. He gets behind, I believe it was a, looked like a bolt. I thought it was like a casket that he was hiding in, but I think it was a bolt. He was hiding behind a bolt and the fireworks kept hitting the bolt so Matt Hardy wouldn't get hit with them and burned. Because if you do get hit with one of those Roman candles, you probably could suffer severe burns. So then Matt was hiding behind the bolt, and the fireworks stopped, and then Matt Hardy threw the bolt, got rid of the bolt, or ran away from hiding behind it. And then Willow, Willow appeared. This was weird, because I thought it was Jeff Hardy, but it was not. Willow appeared, and then uh, Matt Hardy beat him up, pinned Willow, one, two, three takes a mask off a of willow or takes a willow mask off of the Spanish guy that was talking to Matt earlier in videos about this is going to be a massacre and stuff like that it was a Spanish guy that was under the willow mask why was he under it I don't know uh, me I guess he's trying to I guess Jeff put him up to putting the willow mask on I don't know that was weird so it wasn't Willow, it was a Spanish guy under the Willow mask, which was crazy. But it, whatever, it was a twist in the match. And then Jeff Hardy starts climbing up the giant ladder where there's his symbol, I guess it's a Jeff Hardy symbol, whatever it was, some type of art symbol, was in front of the ladder. Jeff Hardy climbing up it, and Matt Hardy's laying on the ground. And I guess he's going to dive on to Matt. I think Matt was laying down like sand or I don't know what it was. I think it was sand. A giant hill of sand. Anyways, Matt gets up off the ground and light, start, lit, lights a fire on the symbol. The symbol gets lit on fire, goes up to the top of the ladder where Jeff is. Jeff falls off the ladder 
at least 12 to 15 feet he falls down onto the, I believe it was sand. He falls down off the ladder on the sand. And then Matt pins Jeff Hardy, who's basically knocked out after falling off the ladder. Matt Hardy pins him. One, two, three. Matt Hardy wins the final battle. As I said, it was, it was entertaining because it was something different I've never seen before. And I've been watching wrestling for um, 29 years. I've been watching wrestling for 29 years. I'm, th I'm 32 years old, so I've been watching wrestling since I was 3. 29 years, a long time, and tonight what I saw between man and Jeff Hardy I've never seen before in wrestling. It was something different. It was innovative. It was outside. It was like ring was set up outside. It was pretty dark. There were not many lights on the ring, but I was okay with that. It was like a backyard wrestling straight up fight. Straight up brawl, backyard wrestling style, fireworks were involved, Singapore canes, ladders, ladders, it was craziness, fire was involved, it, it was craziness, that's the only way I can describe it is, it was something very different, some people that watched it probably, maybe some hated it, maybe some loved it. Maybe some thought it was amazing and awesome and great and something different. I thought it was pretty good because it was something different I've never seen before. I've said that already about a hundred times. But again, it was something different, so I enjoyed it. Tonight's impact on Pop was pretty good. If I give it a rating for the main event, I would say it was a, at least 7.5. Pretty good show. I mean, the rest, the main event was the reason to watch tonight's impact on Pop. If you missed, if you missed the backyard fight, backyard match, <coughs> as I said, excuse me, if you missed it, go back and watch it on uh, Impact Wrestling's YouTube channel. Go back, find the match, and watch it. That's it for my review. That's all I got. Follow me on Twitter at TNAWWEGUY and at NXTWWEGUY. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel. New videos every single week. New videos every week. So, subscribe. Tell your friends that are wrestling fans. If your family's wrestling fans, tell your family to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Tonight's impact on Pop was crazy. The uh, main event was crazy. It was a craziness that you got to see it. If you missed it, you got to watch it. At least watch the main event between Matt and Jeff. Bye for now, everybody. Uh, I'm starting to burn up in here, so bye for now. The air goes back on. Bye for now.